Hey, what's up? It's Matt Flapp, and we're back with another episode of MPTV. We're at the Rapid Fire Pizza in Florence, Kentucky. This is a franchise restaurant owned by former NHL player Michael Castleman. And we're going to talk about what he's done to put his personality, his hard work, into the business and create amazing relationships with everybody around this community. What's up, it's Matt Platt. We are here with another episode of MPTV, where we talk to restaurant owners and operators about a very key element in the business, making profit, but also more importantly, what goes into their business to help them make more? Because sometimes profit's elusive in the restaurant business, right? Yes, it is. And I am here with Michael Castleman at the Rapid Fired Pizza in Florence. Michael, welcome. Good to see you. So, First, before we get into the restaurant part of it, you've got a unique backstory because you were a professional hockey player. Yes, I was. So tell us a little bit about yourself and about that and then how you got in the restaurant business. Sure, I uh, grew up in a small town in Canada called Morrisburg, Ontario, um, just on the St. Lawrence River, across from New York State. Uh, I went to Clarkson University and got drafted by the Red Wings from there and just kind of, when I finished college, I went on and signed a contract and played mostly in the minors. I had a cup of coffee in the NHL. And then my wife and I, I met her here when I was playing in Cincinnati. For the Cyclones? For the Cyclones. And uh, then we went to Europe. I played in Germany for four years and came back. And uh, we had a jewelry business actually for 15 years. And then after that sort of settled down, we were looking to do something different. And my parents, they have a uh, franchise in Canada. Not when I was a kid growing up. They got that when they were older. Okay. When, and uh, so my dad suggested, why don't you try food? So. We kind of looked around at different things and my neighbor told me about rapid fired pizza so we went up to Centerville, the very first store, and my wife and I sat down and had a pizza and sat there for about an hour and kind of watched how things worked and how it went and we said, oh, I like this concept. So the next day we took our kids, because that's important, they have to like it, I think. It's, uh, how old are your kids? <laughs> my son is uh, 18 and my daughter is 14. So they, uh, they love the pizza. And we left that day after sitting there for about another hour and a half, two hours, and said, this is what we're going to try. So we called Ray Wiley and kind of went from there. What was it about, obviously, the great food? I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of Rapid Fired. I eat, I eat different ones all the time. What was it about the process? Uh, was, was it maybe that it was different, that it stood out? I loved the concept. You, had, you go up to the line, you have like 10 different sauces you can choose from. Uh, a couple different pepperonis, uh, sausage, and then all your vegetables. So there's four of us there. Neither one of us liked the same thing. <laughs> so we all got our own personal pizza and we dressed it up however we wanted. And, and, and it was an excellent pizza. And obviously I would never have done it if I didn't like the pizza. So I think it's a great product. It's funny you say that because two weeks ago I was sitting at this table. Me, my wife, my son Cole who's 15, Paige who's 17, her boyfriend who's 19. and. We all got our own pizza, and then we got a dessert pizza. And none of us love what the other one gets, but somehow we all steal a slice from yeah, each other yeah. because I can't eat the whole thing myself. And so I end up taking one of Mason's, Mason takes one of Cole's. And I like that about it because typically if we order from, uh, you know, La Rosa's down the street, which I like La Rosa's, but if we go there, we're getting a large pie. Yeah. And it's negotiation, like, okay, what are we getting? Yeah, and that, that's the one nice thing when you come in here. You can order your own pizza, dress it up exactly how you want, and it's perfect for everybody. Also, what I find great here is we take any allergies very serious. So we okay. change our gloves. So if you have gluten-free, you do vegan pizza. You, we, all you have to do is ask. Sometimes we forget to ask, but we'll change our gloves. We cut all the pizzas with fresh utensils. That way, if there's any allergies or uh, any ideas where people want to stay away from gluten, then we take care of them. And that, that's, a new, that's a new thing the last 10 to 15 years. I mean, I, 20 years ago, I had a friend of mine who had a peanut allergy, but it was kind of like nobody knew what it was. I mean, yeah. we had this pen that you had to stab him with or something when he was little, but never happened, thank goodness. But that's something that you've had to adapt to, I would imagine, because it wasn't around 10, 15 years ago. No, it's been a bit of a learning process. And, and there's one, he's a young kid, probably 13, I'm gonna guess. He comes in, he has a severe dairy allergy. He comes in probably <sighs> twice a week. And we didn't know much about it at the time, never even thought about a dairy allergy before. So we take his pizza, we go right into the cooler, and we make his pizza in the cooler. So it's 
no chance he can touch any uh, cheese or any dairy products. So, and he comes twice a week at least. It's, it's, it's hilarious. I, I enjoy the fact that we can make people happy that have issues when they go out to eat. And that leads me to my next question, ironically, because that right there is what it takes to have repeat business, what it takes to have loyal customers. And I was looking at this before we met. You've got about a thousand reviews online between, I looked at just three places, Facebook, uh, Google, and Yelp. Uh, and you're high. I mean, 4.7 almost across the board. And I look at a lot of restaurants. That's what I do for a living. And there's a lot that are 4 to 4.2. The difference, what I have found, is things like that, that you go over and above. Yeah, I think that's one of the things. And I'm in here probably, well, at least five days a week, mostly in the mornings and uh, in the afternoon. So I go through lunch and I, I try to get to know my customers, greet them when they come in. Um, I'm not from this area, so yeah. uh, it's, it's been interesting getting to know people. Um, they find out I'm Canadian, used to play hockey or whatever, so they have a lot of questions and sometimes I can take the time and talk to them as I make the pizza when they go down the line. But So that side of it, I, I always try to make sure to take care of the customer and that's important to me. I'm a people person. I enjoy talking to people. It's not always conducive when the line is out to the door and you're busy, but yep. I think it's important that you do that. And that's funny you mention that because I didn't meet you through my connections from Rapid Fire. I met you from my financial advisor, Bryce Calvert. Yep. And Bryce, the first thing he said was, Matt, you got to meet this guy. He's a former hockey player. He's always in the restaurant. He go, I go every day this time, me and Angie get two of the no dough pizzas and he knew your story. Yeah. And I think a lot of times that's what is the missing element because I had a, a franchise recently I was talking to and he said one of the things that frustrates him is when he sees negative reviews that people make this comment that they think it's a corporation that we're one of a million locations and we don't really care about the customers and he this, this gentleman replied the review and said hey we messed up. You had a bad experience. I want to fix it. Here's my name. I live three blocks from the store. My kids go to this school. We go to this church. We aren't a corporation. We're local. Yeah. And I think that that helps when people can identify because you're in here all the time. I think that's important that they see me in here all the time. And when, and we're not perfect. We make mistakes. Yeah. Things do happen. But what I have noticed is that they know me. They they don't go on to Facebook and, and make some, some kind of crazy comment. Yeah. They, what they do is they next time they see me in the store, they'll say, hey, I want you to know this is what happened at night when we were in here. I know that you would want to know, so I just figured I'd let you know. And I'd thank them very much and make sure I take care of them. And it's just kind of the repeat, repeat customer that keeps coming back because if they just throw a negative re review in there and you don't address it, then they're probably not coming back. Yeah. Okay, break time. Restauranters, it's Matt. And if you're watching MPTV, you're obviously interested in improving your business. What if I told you you could finally take the hope and pray out of your marketing plan and spend money and see results? You see, most marketing starts with the same exact tactic. You gain the attention of somebody, but that's where the majority of it stops. What we do with the ROI engine is help you gain amazing attention, which drives gigantic engagement. That engagement leads to customers to tell us who they are, meaning they opt into your email, text, and birthday program, and then we drive them to buy something. We've got a lot of great programs that can help you and we'd love to have a conversation with you. If you're interested, it's easy. Check out roiexperts.net. You can schedule an appointment and we'll hop on a call with you. Worst case scenario, you learn how to market your restaurant like you've never heard of before. Back to the action. So along those lines, I, I was telling you this story earlier. I think it's an important thing for people to hear. Uh, about two years ago, I was working with a brand and I did a case study. They had five locations and they Two of the locations were picked for, I guess, specific reasons, and the other three weren't. It was just random. And it stuck out to me because I was doing some stuff for them. We had the exact same marketing spin, the exact same system behind it. And I, I went to the marketing director and the CEO, and I'm like, hey, I want to ask you a question. I said, here's these five stores. Same exact exposure to consumers. This one had like 380 uh, people shared it, thousands of comments. This one had like 50 people that shared it, hundreds of comments. And I said, the reason I think that's important is that to me shows me that somebody that runs this store, their customers are treated like a number. There's no personality. Nobody knows Michael Cass. The people don't know Michael Cass. They don't know he's a hockey player. They don't have, know the employees. The employees don't know the customers. And it was wild because I predicted the, the situation that these were two absentee owners. Then they, that's what they said. Is, yeah, you're, those two people do not work in the restaurant like these three do. And it was wild because what happens is People don't think about this. Like you're, we're worried about the in-store experience, but the minute you put a Facebook ad out or a uh, an Instagram ad out or you, an email, that people when they feel part of your family, 
they're going to tell their friends. That word of mouth travels. I, I think that's important. And me not being in any food before, I never even worked in food before, before I opened Rapid Fire Pizza. And uh, what I've realized is that people enjoy talking to you. They enjoy the personality. And, and you're right. You see other franchise things and the stores, they own four, five, six stores, and they're never in there. So it, I think it's hard sometimes for that owner to uh, put his face in front of everybody. But, I mean, you have to find somebody that will do that for you. So I, I think it's one of the most important things is for you to be there as much as you can, um, show everybody that you care, and treat them with what they want. It's a great experience. What's been your biggest learning curve? Because you weren't in the restaurant business. I know, uh, obviously, being a professional athlete, that's all about routine, drive, and hustle. How is, I guess, what's been, how has that transferred over, and then what's been your biggest learning curve outside of that? I would say the routine is important for me <laughs> when you're being an athlete. Every, you know, you get up in the morning, you do the same things over and over again. So it's sort of the same uh, concept for me. I get up in the morning early, I come to the store, so I'm never in a rush. I can take my time, get the store together, make sure it's ready. So that side of it is, was very easily translated for me. It's just the routine. But once the store opens, sometimes there's all kinds of crazy things that happen. So that has been a learning curve. The Pepsi machine will have an issue or the oven will have an issue or the press. So uh, you have to sort of deal with those things on the fly. So I've had to learn how to uh, kind of take a step back and deal with those issues right away because it's not part of my normal routine on a daily basis. So that side of it has been difficult. Um, I was told all along that the employee side of it was difficult. At the start it was. Um, kind of finding a group of people that you trust and that want to work for you and that will come to work every day. But I have a group of high school kids that have worked for me forever. They're hard workers, they're wonderful kids, they're, uh, they, and they've been here for probably two years. So that side of it has been okay for me, but in the past, from talking to other uh, franchise owners, that, that has been a bit of a problem. So I think that uh, I've been lucky that way. I think it's probably not luck as much as it is the fact they see you in the store and so they see you leading by example because I think that's a big thing I my background I've, I've had businesses since I was 21 and we had for 10 years we owned a boat and RV dealership with 40 employees I think 43 at one point and the one thing that I was never afraid to do was get my hands dirty and say hey I want to show you why what we're doing and then why we're doing it yeah so they understood the why is an important element but I'm guessing that transfers over because they see you in here hustling yeah that, that certainly does and you know the other thing that was a big change for us is actually trusting other people to do your work. Because my wife and I in the business we had before for 15 years, it was her and I, her sister, and a few other people that would help us. I mean, we had like a, a showroom in New York and different things, but you're, you're just paying a percentage to the company that owns that. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to the, fun, to the fact that you have to trust other people to show up, do the work that you're doing, that, that was a bit of an adjustment too. It's hard to let go sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah dele delegating can be the, uh can be the biggest uh, mystery in people. I, yeah. I have a, a full-time assistant and I have a handful of employees that have very specific tasks in my company. And I can't, I, it cracks me up, I'm pretty good at it, but then there'll be weeks where I, I, I just kind of forget to delegate. I mean, this morning we came from a coffee shop where I met my director of sales and I listed out seven or eight people that somehow I was talking to. I shouldn't have been. <laughs> it's like, Doug, here, yeah. here's their name, email, cell phone, the conversation, get me out of the equation because I'm just going to mess it up because it's not my specialty. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to let go. We have a hard, had a hard time dealing with that yeah. for myself. My wife, she was here when we first opened, but it's like a 40 minute drive for us to get here. So it's hard for her to be here, take care of the kids and, and stuff like that. So, but she does the, all the scheduling. So there is a bit of a disconnect there sometimes because she's never in the store. She's never met the people, but she's talking to them all the time, but it all works out. Yeah. Restaurant owners, did you know Matt has free online marketing courses that teach you how to successfully market your restaurant? Email support at mattplapp.com to get access to the courses and a free social media content calendar. So let's talk about a hot topic in the food business is uh, food costs. And I was talking to a restaurant operator recently who has a burger joint, and he was talking about what he puts into his burgers and how it's, some days it's tough competing with the burger chain down here because they're doing better quality, they're doing more toppings, they're doing things like you have the sauce, the sauce bar over here. They're doing things that cost more money, but amplify the experience. I know that if you're not familiar with Rapid Fire out there and the, when you're watching this podcast or listening to it, there's a sauce bar, which I love the mango habanero. 
It's amazing. I love putting it in there, dip my pizza in it. There's probably ways you could save money with that. Certainly, the, the sauce station is an experience for everybody when they come in. There's 12 different sauces that they can choose to, they can put it right on their pizza, or we have little souffle cups they can put it in, they can dip their pizza. But sometimes I see people getting like six, seven, eight sauces. Well, I don't think you need that many sauces for yeah. dip your pizza in, but that's one of the little things. Do I take that away and put it behind where you can control how, many peop how much uh, dipping sauces people are getting? But, uh, I guess you could, but it's, it takes away from the experience. So that's something I kind of give into and it drives my food costs up a little bit, but that's a choice I made. Yeah, well, but it's, it's also, like you said, giving to the experience and what's, maybe you save 10, 20, 30 cents here if you do that, but maybe you lose four or five visits a year when you, when you do it the other way. Yeah, it's, it's, that's something I fight with all the time is, the, is controlling the food costs and finding little things here, little things there. It's, it's probably the most difficult thing for me is, is keeping that uh, food cost to a level where you're able to be profitable and, and make some money and, and still your customers get a good experience. They get a pizza with good amount of toppings. They get the sauce station. It's all those things all kind of go hand in hand. So any little tips or little things that you have found that have helped with food costs that maybe somebody out there could benefit from? I have not found them yet, to be honest with you. <laughs> if I had a good tip to give you, I would give it to you. But I, I just kind of go by what Rapid Fire has given us in terms of portioning control and doing things the way they asked to do. Because they've been in the food business, the people that started this franchise for 30 plus years. So I kind of just go by what they say and try to manage the food costs that way. Yeah. Okay. So last question. I always like to ask people, it's kind of a hot seat. It's you're talking to a, a restaurant operator just like you. What would be one piece of advice you would give them, a tip, a trick, something you learned that they can implement or they can do differently every day to make their business better? I would say be there as much as you can and be personable. Greet people, say hello, talk to them as much as you can. Give them the experience that they want to come back to your store every time because they'll see your face, they'll say hello, ask you how your kids are, you ask how their kids are doing. I think that's probably the most important thing to me. Cool, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Matt. Rapid Fire Pizza, Florence. Former hockey player, you said you had a cup of coffee in the hockey. In the I had NHL, a, in yeah. In the NHL, I had, <laughs> I had a cup of coffee this morning. I couldn't imagine being on the ice, but we were on the ice here, Rapid Fire Florence, MPTV. We'll see you next episode.